the women in the Bible land, they're so simple that within a day, they're suddenly now subservient to the men. Everything's completely changed. And the only way for the women to get power back is to use their feminine wiles and to make the men jealous. Because men, we so stupid, man. We just like women. Any woman do. Oh. Welcome to the Showbiz Showdown with me, JJ and this Yobi. This is still the only show on Talk TV where we take on the world of entertainment head on with fiery but friendly debates. Today, we are talking about this cultural icon. Hey Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Hi Barbie. Ugh. Hi Ken. Hi Ken. That's right, Barbie has made it back to the big screen and I've gone and seen the film, which begs me to ask the question, is Barbie anti-men? <laughs> I don't think it's fair to say she's anti-men because she's done plenty more crimes than just that. She's also anti-women. She's kind of anti-trans. She's definitely anti-feminist. And weirdly, she's a bit anti-Barbie. Now, listen, I'm going to tell you now, there's going to be some spoilers. So if you don't want to know what happens in the film, fast forward to the last 30 seconds, hit the like button and comment like you watched the whole thing anyway. Joining me in the lion's den, the voice of a generation, the prettiest in pink journalist I've ever seen. Beaver Kang, welcome. Thank Beaver. you, thank you for having me. So let's hear your feminist rant about why Barbie's not anti-men, even though she completely is. Well, you, <laughs> you hear a lot of the likes of Ben Shapiro, that kind of bloke, <laughs> who I'm sure you have no affinities with, but saying, you know, this film would never be made the other way around. That mm. would be, you know, a travesty. You'd be paraded through the streets. It'd be awful. Of course it wouldn't be made the other way around because the whole point of the film is it satirizing the real world which is anti-women by depicting the converse a world which is anti-men i don't think that the real world is anti-women and i don't think most of our viewers think that either which is why we're gonna you have you don't think the patriarchy exists i think patriarchy exists so but I don't, is... I don't think it's anti-women what is the patriarchy if not anti -women? <laughs> i think that there are plenty of men who are going to be watching this and will be dragged to watch barbie by their daughters and those same men are going to sit there and think, this is really unfair. They are totally screwballing us here. And my daughter, my young impressionable child, is now thinking that all men are evil because this Barbie film makes it seem that way. Because, look, Barbie's got the, the imaginary world where she lives, right? And in that world, men are stupid and they're superfluous and no one, no one really needs them. And all the Kens are there for is to entertain and be looked at by the Barbies. Cool, I get it. How ironic, lovely. Then Barbie goes to the real world and within seconds, she's sexually harassed, she's wolf all that. It's like they transformed modern day California into 1940s America. It's, some guy goes, hey, Blondie, give us a smile. Like, why is this Dick Tracy? It's yeah. nuts. Uh, people do very much still, I mean, not hey, Blondie in my case, sadly, <laughs> but demand smiles on the street completely. I think the- It's a lie, this film. That's what I, it is. I think the really, who, who would you say was the best most interesting character in the Barbie film who got all the best lines. Ken. Exactly. But it was right? written by a woman. It's not what, his fault. Exa well, exactly. What kind of... How can a film be anti-men when by far the best characters are male? But Barbie, also the worst characters in it are male. Well, they were, so, they were the best characters to watch. They got all the funniest lines. Every time Ryan Gosling opened his mouth, I was laughing. There was Whereas no... Whereas Barbie, all the Barbies were flat, not very funny. It's pretty not, one Because women aren't good actors. That's, that's no, not, it's not. not. It's because <laughs> we live in a world which still kind of thinks. And that's why I think Barbie was a lot more disappointing to watch as a woman than as a man. Because I, if I, I the person I identified most with was Ken. He had the best storyline. He went from the oppressed to the insurgent to the oppressor to, you know, reaching self-actualization. What kind of a journey... Did Barbie go on? I still don't well, really know. This, the, the, I agree that the film is very confusing. I still think it's anti-men, but I also said it's anti-women because the Barbies essentially start off as being bimbos, for lack of a better word, right? And then um, the, the film opens with young girls and again this is why they're, they're against motherhood young girls playing with dolls and suddenly barbie arrives like a messiah and these young girls start smashing their dolls smashing their heads in and it's like we don't need that anymore why is this film against motherhood why is greta gerwig and noah baumsham the guy who wrote it with her why are they against women and motherhood i thought it's, i thought it's supposed to be a big whole, feminist one thing. of the central premises of the film was about the difficulties of motherhood and the uh, the demands on women to be everything, to be mother, but also to feel single, to be workaholic, but also not to threaten men. Yeah. 
it's and, impossible to be a woman. But yeah, but I, I think fat. it did that this. in quite an on. The, I did think I agree with you in that it was it felt a little anti because it wanted to as a film it wanted to have its cake and eat it mm-hmm. too. So it wanted to say it doesn't matter if you're pretty. Oh, but Margot Robbie just happens to be the most beautiful woman in the world throughout the whole thing. Uh-huh. Oh, take a little swipe at capitalism, but be made by this huge like multi conglomerate. Yes. Really, like it did want to be everything at once, yeah. and that's what made it quite confusing. Extremely confusing. And also what took away from the humor in moments whereas like another character who i thought was brilliant and a case of it not being anti-men was will farrell how often do you see a woman over the age of 55 being given a part like will farrell got in that movie so rarely yeah yeah i mean the narrator of the film was helen mirren that's true yeah but and she's like the voice of reason like you know She's the her. voice of God in the film. But she's the voice. She's not a face. All the faces. I mean, there but were even, some older women. But even like... Will Ferrell being in the film and the, the whole depiction. So in the film, they have the Mattel board, right? Um, in the film. And it's all men. And Will Ferrell's in charge. And he's crazy Will Ferrell jumping around and saying silly things because he's a man. And we're really, oh, dopey man. But in real life, the Mattel board is made up almost 50% of women. And for 30 years, the, the head of the company was a woman who created Barbie. So this is just more propaganda, more lies pushed by Greta Gerwig, who the left seems to think is their, their new messiah. I mean, anything that she does, it's amazing. There's this terminology, well, Shapiro said it about it, and people said it before, peeling, right? Peeling. peeling. I've never heard of it. So, so it's about Jordan Peele, the director. Because oh, it's because he's so loved. Yes. You go and see a Jordan Peele film, even if it's terrible, you're like, oh, that was so great. I love because he's part. He's on, he's on the right side of messaging. He's got the right political stances, so people love his stuff. Greta Gerwig is that for me now. This film is being Gerwigged. Everyone's saying, wasn't this film great? It made three hundred million dollars, guys. It costs more than three hundred million dollars in total at the moment. It's not even. It's made about twenty million. When you're taking the fact it costs one fifty to make the film, then another two hundred million spent on marketing. It's operating at a twenty million. It's objectively million. been a huge box office success, but I agree that we that we. I was expecting it to be more right on than it was in terms of women. I uh-huh. didn't find it particularly radical or agenda pushing. I found it pretty much more of a reflection of what's happened in the last twenty years than something that was pushing us forward in any way. But I think it's really interesting that the take home for a lot of guys has been this is anti men because. They've sat down in the cinema and for the first time it's like, wait, I'm not the star of this show. Nah. I would argue that Ken still is the star <laughs> of the show. Yeah, but Ken I is. think it's but I but I think it is it is they're like, wait, all the characters who are men are really uh, are, are seen as stupid and facile and only exist as an extension of the female characters. That is exactly the problem for women in in cinema and all forms of art for generations. That's why they invented the Bechdel test was because so few films, even films professing to be feminist and female led, didn't feature conversations between a conversation between two women, which isn't about a man. Like so many films fail by that metric. And I would say probably I I can't quite remember if it did, but I would imagine the Kens probably did have a conversation that wasn't about Barbie. Like, so... It, oh, it, yeah. There was a conversation where one Ken says to the other one when on the beach, I'm going to beach you off. Yeah. I'm gonna be- you better come through me if you're going to beach him off. I'm going to beach you off first. It passes, they, 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 they had a gay conversation. The wow. <laughs> like, it is, you know, it had... Women's problems in that film, um, I've got to admit, say you're like, I'm not thin enough. It's women who are judging women. This is this is not men. Even in the film, it's not the Ken saying, well, that Barbie's too fat or that Barbie's too light-skinned or that Barbie's too dark-skinned. The issues that women have in the film, as I would say, in, my, in the real world also, are, are by women. Men are not as critical as, of women as women are of women, but men are still blamed but for it. But the film tried to engage with that idea, and I agree, not perfectly, effectively, when they... So the Barbies do what men have done in the real world, which is they realise, hey, we'll pit them against each other. And that's what we did to women in tabloid culture. We were like, right, let's make them feel like they're competing. And then we can just sit back and say they're tearing each other down. (laughs) No, it's not about me. That's the message of the film. That's the message of the film. Well, let's do another spoiler real quickly here. So Ryan Reynolds' Ken goes to the real world with Barbie. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling. They all look the same. All these white Ryans look the same to me. Sorry, Ryan, whoever. The Ryans are tricky. The Ryans are tricky. Uh, Anyway, so Ryan Gosling as Ken goes to the real world, realizes that men are in control here and he's actually appreciated and celebrated, takes it back to the Barbie world 
and the bar the women in, in barbland they're so simple that within a day they're suddenly now subservient to the men everything's completely changed and the only way for the women to get power back is to use their feminine wiles and to make the men jealous because men we so stupid man we just like women any woman do oh. and that's that's the message i got from it yeah barbie hates men barbie hates women this is the biggest spoiler alert and it's our no, last one this is the biggest one turn well turn off right now because this is the biggest spoiler alert barbie ends the film going to see a gynecologist right which to me the message to that was a that's and i see it as anti-trans and anti and anti-women more widely because it's just bear with me bear with me beebs this is how i see it Go to a gynecologist because presumably now she has a vagina mm -hmm. or she wants one or she wants to get pregnant or whatever so the film to me says that despite slagging off motherhood at the start and smashing up the dolls we don't want to be mothers we want to play with adult dolls cool whatever now you're saying for Barbie to be like a real woman in the real world, mm. she's now going to have a vagina and, and perhaps get pregnant. I think that's a really interesting point. What that's boiling down women to the last thing of being a woman is having a vagina. Yeah. There's something to that. I think that um, obviously like we did have trans Barbie. like so. Which wasn't, yeah, we had one because we could, we could see it was a trans So that was woman, like good. But they didn't say this was a trans, this is a trans Barbie. I think there's something to that. I think the, the more what they were possibly going for with that scene that I thought worked quite well was, so increasingly, well, uh, women have been expected to have vaginas almost like Barbies, hairless, you know, no visible labia, all these things like the, the politics of the vagina has Apologies. been really, <laughs> it's been really influenced by dolls and art and kind of forms of representation of women that haven't shown the reality in the of western female, world uh, yes. in the western world yeah, the reality of female genitals. Mm -hmm. And so that to me was like a, a bit of a breakaway of you know we don't uh, we don't in the real world women don't have these smooth sections between their legs they have problematic <laughs> gynecologically checked get your smear test vaginas. <laughs> okay look to be honest i haven't um, been won over i think that barbie is still Fair, anti and i think you've made some great points i think you've made some wonderful points and i appreciate you dressing in pink Thank for you. the occasion Always. but let us know what you think below leave your comments look for me, Barbie says, if you are a woman who wants to be a mother, get screwed. If you're a woman who wants to have a career and doesn't mind being part of the patriarchy and progressing, get screwed, get bent. That's what the film says to me. If you are a man, you're evil, you are a predator, you see a woman, you're going to wolf whistle because that's what you do because you're men, all men are the same. That's what this film says to me. So I wouldn't take my daughters or my nieces or any woman under the age of 16 to watch this film because it is just complete and utter anti-male, anti-woman, anti-trans, anti-plastic propaganda. But I don't know. I'm sure Oppenheim is a feminist masterpiece. <laughs> <laughs> Leave your comments below, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.